I do here now. Now it's going to start. I'm still like a dead person. <laughs> what happened? Oh, yeah. Extra credits out the door now. Fix it. Is it turned up too high? Let's see. Something is not right. Let's see. Yeah, we're going to listen to that. I'm just going to clean that out. After I sang a little bit of Italian, this thing went out of kilter. <laughs> I have to be careful with my voice, you know, because uh, I've been this close to giving people heart attacks. All I've said is, hey, how are you? They jump like this. And I think to myself, honestly, I wonder what this person would do if I really got mad. <laughs> Okay, now let's look at stage two. Okay, same deal as the previous problem. And here you have the recursive relationship, the way, the correct way uh, uh, to be used. Look, you have to minimize the local cost at operation two combined with the optimal cost for the remaining operations. And for uh, this uh, stage, the state variable is <coughs> equal to S2, okay? We'll, and the decision, as you know, is five, six, or seven, because the state values here, state values here are five, six, or seven, okay? So these are the previous machines in this operation, the, the previous machines are five, six, or seven, okay? Therefore, X2 is going to be that. <coughs> Notice that S3, which is here, is equal to uh, X2. Let's see. I think that's, that's pretty much it. But again, the, the one that is given here is S2. That is the preceding machine at the second operation or second stage. S3 is the preceding machine after stage two or after the second operation. That is S3. We know that S3 is equal to X2. To X2. So there is no problem. So let's consider here uh, uh, S2 equal 1 and X2 equal 5. Okay. S2 equal 1 and X2 equal 5. It's a, it's a combination. Then the optimal number of units, let's, let's, let's look at that uh, in, 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 the, in the table with data. This is for the second operation. We're going to focus on the second operation. And the preceding machine is one, and we will select five. Okay. <clears throat> okay, if the preceding machine is one, and we select five, then the cost are 20 for the fixed cost, three for the variable cost, 
12 for the defect percentage and 10 for the scrapping cost. I highlighted this as of, it, it, it's, it's like in gray. It doesn't look. Well, here it, it clearly says, you can see it highlighted. But on the screen you will see the difference much better. And this is yellow. That's for operation two. So the optimal number of units is going to be uh, 106. And the defect percentage is 12%. Okay. And the number of units required would be 121, which is 106 divided by 1 minus 0 0.12 equals to 120.45, rounded up to 121. say that uh, S2 equal 5, see, in the, in the previous operation, we are going to select uh, the fifth machine. That's X2 equal 5. Well, S3 is equal to X2, so S3 equal 5, and the optimal number of units is 106 in red. That 106 is the one that I need to do these calculations. Do you have to do anything special with the percent defect? Excuse me, uh, Mike. <coughs> Do you have to do anything special with the percent defect? Because 1 minus 0.12 is 0 0.88 and 100 divided by 0 0.88 is 114. You, you know, do 1 minus 0 0.88. Let's, let's, let's look at this. Uh, what is okay, first, the level is 106, the one that comes from that. Yeah. And this is 12%. So yeah. it's 106 divided by 1 minus 0.12. Mm -hmm. What did you get? 113.6. Uh, oh, it's 106. Yeah, yeah okay. 106. Gotcha. Okay, I used 100. Okay, 106. 100 was at the beginning. Okay, gotcha. Okay. But remember, we, we are moving from right to left. Okay. So 120 units. <coughs> so this comes from the table for the blue boxes, the optimal table for the blue box. And the 12% came from my data. Okay. And, and it came from my data because I'm using a, 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 a selection X2 to 5. And I select X2 to 5, given that the precision machine was 1. So the number of scrap units is 121 minus 106 is 15. And here was the, is the calculation. Is, uh, the variable cost is 20. The variable cost is 3. The scrapping cost is 10. Therefore, it's 20 plus 3 times 121 here, plus 10 times 15, this is the 15 over here. And you, that would give you 533. And then <coughs> when you say S3 equal X2, S3 equal X2. So S3 is this value here. Yeah. For S3 equal X2 equal 5, okay. then the cost, the optimal value for the remaining. Uh, uh, Operations in reality, there is only one there, is 5172. Five, Let's look, take a look at that. So it's F3 star of 5.
3 instead of 5 is 5,172. 5,172. Which is this one here. So 5,172 for the new calculation. This is it, look, 5,172. And then we add 533 here. This is 533 plus 5,172. And you get 5,705. Now another one is S2 equal 3 and X2 equal 7. The optimal number of units is 110. The defect percentage will be 12% in this case. The number required units will be 125. The number of units scrapped will be 125 minus 110. This is another combination. S2 equal 3 and X2 equal 7. And, and then, in that case, this F3 star of 7 is 5,280. So we need to add 540 to 5,280 for that combination. And you get 5,820. So here I calculated 5,820. And here I calculated, calculated 5705. One, the first one is in red, the second one is in blue. So this calculation is exactly the same as the previous one, same procedure. So I have two values. And here, the, you know, I need to calculate uh, S2 really takes on values 1, 2, 3, or 4. 1, 2, 3, or 4. And X2, 5, 6, or 7. So you have 4 times 3 is 12 values. Of the 12 values, I calculated 2. This one and this one. <coughs> and then you get the lowest value in each row. This is this one here. I happen to calculate the optimal value here this time. And this is x2 equal 5. And the calculation here of this one was done with 121 units, as you remember. In here, you get 5,410, and that calculation is with 125 units. The other one that I checked is the blue one, it happened to be the, the optimal cost here, too, for the S2 equal 3, and then the calculation was done on the value of 125. And the last one, so I asked you as an exercise to, to check uh, the other values. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 9, 2 is 10. But if you, if, if you feel that you can do a pretty good thing, just check the one for the optimum. Check this one and this one. So that you will check this value, 125 and 125. And now we go to the last stage. And here we want to minimize the local cost in the first operation plus the cost of remaining operation starting with two, which is two and three, really. And in here, S1 is given, and the transformation is that S2, the input state for the blue bar, is equal to the decision made in the stage, in the first stage. And X1 is going to be one, two, three, or four, because the states here are one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So let's say that x1 equal 1. There is no pre preceding machine, so s1 here is not defined with the first operation. So the, for x1, the defect percentage is 10%. The number you require is 121, which is the one we want for when when S2 is equal to 1, look, when S2 is equal to 1, the optimal number of units is 125, divided by 1 minus 
0.10 is 135. So the number of scrap units is 14, 135 minus 121. And the local cost is equal to uh, uh, <coughs> 6,870. But the state here, S2 equal X1, state for the blue box, S2 equal X1. So S2 is equal to 1. And for S2 equal 1, this, again, this is the optimal cost. So this value, 121 here, and this value comes from the previous table for uh, S1 equal one, S2 equal one, this is a two, S2 equal one. Is it clear to all of you? Just, just practice and practice and you see that it's, you get sick of that. See, that, that the, the best way is when you get sick of it. You say, okay, I, I'm gonna stop. I'm torturing myself, doing something I already know. When you don't get to that point, then you've got to torture yourself, but you get to the point where you, you feel like that. Then you get 12,570. Not that we didn't put anything here, put a dash. The other four possibilities are, the other three possibilities are two, three, and four. Look, two, three, and four, and you get these values. And you always go to the previous table. The, for the previous table, you, you will select S2 equal two, then S2 equal three. S2 equal 4, and then you do all these calculations, this, 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 and the corresponding Q values. What in here, the one I chose happens to be the best, that the, 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 the optimal cost, minimal cost. So, that <coughs> means that uh, uh, <coughs> you have this one. No, no, it's not, it's not the best. I thought I, I was poor. This is good. This is better. So this is 12,575. This is 11,740. So the best of all these numbers is this one. So as an exercise, practice with this one more than with this or this. I think this, this will be better. Then you get this quantity, and you will see that it's done with 139. And the optimal solution will be for, the optimal decision will be x1 equal 4. It's very close to the stage coach problem. Will you, will you say that? Okay, I have a, a, a little different problem coming up in the, in the few minutes that we have. I cover. So this is uh, a, a pictorial representation of the solution. So you, you have 100 units here, remember. And we move over here with x1 equal 4 okay. and process 139. So the optimal solution is, in the first operation, choose machine 4, start with 139 units. Then, in the second operation, make the state equal to 4. And then that will be a result in choosing 6. Okay. And then the next <coughs> state will be six because the next state is equal to the machine that you have chosen in the previous stage and for this one you choose 12 okay. and then you get another unit so that one 139 units select machine four for the first operation use machine six in the second operation and use machine 12 in the third operation and that's the cheapest way to get the 100 units out This really more clearly is called deterministic dynamic programming. So in deterministic dynamic programming, this is the picture that you have to have all the time. You are coupling or linking, connecting two stages, stage N and stage N plus one. Okay, here the state variable is SN, here the decision variable is XN, there is a local return. Then here the state for this one is 
is n plus 1, and the decision for this one is x n plus 1. And here we want to have not only this particular uh, stage, but all the remaining stages. So there is an optimal contribution here, and there is a local contribution there. But, but this is the, the, the notation that we need to use. It's n x n, n here, n plus 1. It's n plus 1, x n plus 1. This will be f n zero of s n x n, and this will be f star sub n plus one of s n plus one s n plus one. And then, how did you get the, this value by finding this transformation? S n plus one is a function, I call it a k, k sub n plus one, of what? Of the state and the decision at the previous stage. So now this is, I, I color the remaining stages in blue. It looks more like this. So this is the local contribution. This is the actual contribution for the remaining stages with input S n plus one. this up so we can see it. Now you can see it pretty clearly now. Now, there are two typical types of relationships. One is additive. The additive relationship is, is because of this plus here. And the other one is multiplicative. And the multiplicative relationship is because of, of this time sign, multiply by sign there. You look at the two, they look identical. This is a, a, an optimization of, of Fn of Sn, optimization of Fn of Sn. The optimization is over xn here and there. And more, the optimization could be a minimization or a maximization. And the quantity that we want to optimize is if it is an additive relationship, is the local contribution plus the contribution from the remaining stages. And we need this state transformation formula to continue with the problem. Otherwise, we will be stuck here. In the second case, we replace the plus by the time sign. Plus by multiply by. And the rest is the same. So we have two types of deterministic problems. In general, additive problems, multiplicative problems. I don't want to complicate your life more. It is possible to have a mix of the two. So we are not going to look at that here. Yes? What about the recursive relationship? What exactly is that? OK, the multiplicative relationship, I'm going to have an example here. OK, but the, uh, good question. Sometimes uh, the returns are not additive. They are multiplicative. For example, probabilities of failure. Okay. If uh, Let's say that I want to have a, uh, I'm going to talk precisely about that. <coughs> I have teams of people working on solving a problem. And the three teams, let's say you have three teams, for the three for the problem to fail to be solved, you need to have, you need to have the three teams failing. Because if at least one of the teams succeeds, the problem is solved. The problem is the solution fails to exist if the three teams fail. So what is the probability that three teams will fail? Probability is assuming independence that one team fails because of themselves, not because of the other. Okay, so it is fair to assume that these are independent events. So a probability of failure will be solved from the multiplication can be calculated from the multiplication of the probability of failure of the first team times 
the probability of the second thing times the probability of the first thing. So in a lot of probability problems, even though this is deterministic dynamic problem, the objective contains a probability that doesn't make the problem probabilistic, it's still deterministic. But the output that we are calculating is a probability. In the real guy, I put, you, don't, you are not responsible for that, I'm not going to give you a, a, a quiz or anything like that, or a homework. But in the real guy, I, I talk a little bit about probabilistic dynamic program. Probabilistic dynamic program has to do uh, uh, with um, a distribution, a probability distribution to get the state at the next stage. See, in all these problems, I get this, this state at the next stage from the state and the decision in the previous stage. Over. But in general, that's not the case. We, we, we to say, okay, the probability of the next state will be 20% if it happens like this, 80% if it happens like that. Then you have, you have like two branches. I mean, you have different probabilities, three, 30%, 30%, 40%, then you have three branches. And then the next stage will form more like a decision tree. That's probabilistic dynamic problem. I have an example in, in the real life theory. So I urge you, encourage you to read it, okay? But it's not really included at the material that you are, you are responsible to know. So I have this example. Quickly, I remember when, 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 when a full young man, uh, uh, I was watching on our family black and white little TV set in Colombia. I am from Bucaramanga, Colombia. I'm very proud to be from Bucaramanga, Colombia. It's a, it's a, it's a city that in my days when had only 10,000. Today has over 1 million people. You know. But I, uh, I have lived in the United States more than half of my life. But when I go to Bucaramanga, Colombia, everybody thinks I work there, speak Spanish perfectly, no accent, nothing like that. It's, you know, some people come here and stay, stay 10, 10 months in the United States and they go home speaking with a foreign accent. Not me, I speak Spanish. Well, I speak Spanish with my wife all, all the time because uh, she's from Colombia. So, so I, 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 I uh, go to Colombia, Bucaramanga. Nobody thinks I live in the United States. So uh, it was 1969. And I remember we were celebrating the independence of Colombia, which is July 20. So that day was a very special day because that's when, when uh, Neil Armstrong went to the moon. You remember? July 20, 1969. Okay, this, I mentioned that because this probably has to do a little bit with that. This a government space project is conducting research on a certain engineering problem that must be solved before man can fly safely to Mars. Three research teams are currently trying three different approaches for solving this problem. The estimate has been made that under present circumstances, the probability of failure is 40% for the first team, 60% for the second one, and 80% for the third one. In order to reduce these probabilities of failure, there are two scientists are going to be allocated among the three teams. And you cannot split the scientists. Is you are going to give one scientist to one team only. So a two may go to the same team, but one team may get zero. So you have two, three, two, and three teams. Two scientists available. Now the following table gives probabilities of failures as a function of the number of additions to each team. If you have team one and you don't add anything, then the current probability is 0.4. It continues to that to be that. The other one is 60% and the one is 80%. But if you add one person to the first team, this, this 40% goes to 20, and if you add two, goes to 15%. Here, doing the same thing. One person will lower this to 40%, two to 20%. And here, one person will lower this to 50%, and two will lower it to 30%. The question is, what do you do with the, the two scientists? Then, 
the answer is I will allocate the two scientists in such a way that I can minimize the probability of failure. Minimize, not, not maximize the probability of failure. Minimize. I have given this problem in the past to some students. You know, I, I haven't given it here yet. I, I'm teaching this class for the graduate students in UTK too. And I'm going to give them a final uh, 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 <coughs> maybe take home, I don't know, we we'll see. But I have given this problem in the final way. I say the probability of success. See, I can change this problem. I say probability of success are 60%, 40%, 20%. If you add one person, the probability of success go to, go to 80%, 60%, 50%. And here, 85%, 80%, 70%. And I said, I have asked, how do you do this? And all of them, almost all of them, assume that to win, you need to multiply the probabilities of success. I said, well, you are saying that you solve this problem when everything works. See, that's one thinking. You solve the problem when at least one thing works. So the best way, that's a kinological thing to think, kinological thinking, is a kinological mind thinking. So the kinological mind will say, okay, why do you want to simplify my life? I'm going to work with probability of failure. Because I know that for the problem not to be solved, then team one, team two, and team three will fail. And, and then get out of, of problem of dealing with probability of success. Because you deal with probability of success, then you have to start going with combinations. The probability of success is if, if one thing works, or and the other two fail, and if the, the two, th uh, two things work and the third one fails, and if the three things work, and there is a lot of possibilities. And so this possibility is like multiplications and the multiplication bring down the numbers, and then the addition will bring them up. And then you have a mixed recursive relationship. So you can solve it. I have solved this problem with using probability of success. And then uh, you see how easy it is when you think kinologically. Because then it's, it's, it's a meaningless problem. So kinological thinking is good thinking, huh? And yes. It's, it's really good. It simplifies life. Okay, let's do it like that. Okay, uh, here you have the three teams. Now you will see that the, the state variable will have a new interpretation that we have not seen before. The number of scientists available for each team is the state value. So team one is stage one. So the teams have the stages, team one, team two, team three. The number available for each team is S1 equal to S2, I don't know what it is, and then S3 for 1, 2, and 3. The decision variable is X1, X2, and X3. So the decision variable is to select a number that does not exceed S1 for X1, does not exceed uh, S2 for X2, and does not exceed S3 for a three because that's the number available. So what is any x? For, for example, this this is x n for n equal two. This is x n for n equal one. This is x n for x uh, for n equal three. And this is s n s n s n. So what is the, the the allowable range for values for x n? Is zero, one, two, through x through Sn. The number Xn is an integer number. So it will be 0, 1, 2, 3, Sn. Raise your hand if you agree with that. Good, good. And this is the probability of failure. I'm going to define this as probability of failure. And S1 is equal to. Here is a multiplicative relationship. Uh, uh, 
I am going to minimize the probability of failing uh, uh, at one particular time, which is now, for the, or, or for, for, the, for one team, and this is for the probability of failure for the remaining teams. If we are going to consider team one first, team two second, and team three third, to work with this problem, then I'm going to take the liberty to say that this is the probability of failure now or later. But that now or later is not built in the definition of the problem. It's for me to look at things more carefully because, or clearly, because I, I one time I've been solving with this thing, this problem. So that's now. With the problems that are to the right of that one that will be later. So, loosely uh, uh, speaking, I can say that this is the probability of failure now or later. Or if, if more clearly, the probability of, uh, of, 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 of uh, having a failure for a team N, and this is the probability of having a team failure for all the remaining teams after him. So, this is the probability of failure at stage N, and this is the probability of failure after stage N. That is clearly correct. But I have taken the liberty to say now and later. Okay, so, this depends on Sn plus 1, as you know, always. Sn is given here, if it is S1, if it is S1 is 2. So, okay. so Sn is given. Xn is the decision. The decision is over this integer value. But here, which is for the remaining stages after n, and what is the number available? This is the state transformation formula. He says the number available is equal, equal to the number that was available minus the decision, minus the number of people that were decided to allocate to a particular team. So <coughs> this, this is for stages after n. This is for stage n. If at the n stage you have Sn available and you selected Xn, then what remains available is Sn minus Xn. So the key is this. The new state is equal to available minus selected. New state equal to available minus selected. So the new state, that's stages n plus 1. And remain is equal to available, available what at stage n, the, the one that I went before. This is for the blue box. Remember. So this is the input to the blue box. So it's the input to the previous stage minus the one selected. Raise your hand if that's clear to you. That's good. So so there are a lot of problems like this where instead of science you have money. So the money available is equal to what we had before, minus what we use. So let's start with stage N, the last thing. So you assume that the number available could be 0, 1, or 2. There are two people, so you can assume 0, 1, or 2. Why? Because in the previous two, you, you may have chosen nothing. 0, then you continue with 2. 0, 1, 2, 1, 2. Therefore, here you have 0, 1, or the, the whole 2. Yeah. Or you might have chosen only 1, then you have 1. Or you might have chosen both, then you have 0. So 0, 1, or 2. This is the probability of failure in the, in, in the third team. And this is the simplest of all the problems to solve, you know, in the last stage. So the probability of failure is equal to the probability of this team failing. This is failing now or after, or with the remaining stages. There's nothing remaining. So these two are the same. 
is when they have a zero here. This domain has a zero here, they mean the same. And the same thing here. If you want to optimize this, then you put a star here for, for any value of S3, which is given 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. And you want to minimize this quantity, the local, this is the same as the local uh, return, which depends on S3 and X3. And the optimization is between uh, 0 and S3. Okay, we do it always with, with a table. Let's say that uh, in here, S3 is equal to 0. Okay, if S3 is equal to 0, then, you know, X3 across the top is 0, 1, or 2. Where you have 0 available, you cannot choose more than 0. So you have to choose 0 and the probability at this time of failure for that team, the third team is 80%. And this is blank, blank. You could do put 0 here and 0 here. You just leave it blank. These are not defined. Then the little optimization, add the two columns, and then what is the best value in the row for S3.0 is 0.80. And what is the optimal decision is zero. That, that's trivial. Same thing with the next one, though. No. Let's say you have one. Well, if you have one, then you can, if you don't select anything here, it's 0.80. Well, if you select one, then you lower the 0.80 to 0.50. And you definitely cannot select two because you have only one. So what is the lowest probability of failure is 0.50, and it corresponds to x3 equals one. And now you have two. It's for the 13. You, you can uh, uh, select nothing and you will continue with 0.80. Okay. Or you can select one and you have a probability of 0.50. Or you select the two and then you bring down this to 0.30. So here you will not do nothing here if you have one person here, you have two. And then do the optimization. The optimization is the thing is 0.3 and then that's for x3 for 2. So the optimal solution is 0.80 if s3 is equal to 0, 0.50 if s3 equal 1, and 0.30 if s3 is equal to 2, and these are the corresponding decisions. That's the simplest problem to solve. So let's go into the second one. You say, OK, the second team, and this is remaining teams, that's only one team, three. S2, X2, and this is the local probability, the failure probability of team 2, dependent on how many people are available and how many you decide to <coughs> select, how many you choose. And then, whatever you don't choose here is left over here. And then for this number left, you have the optimal probability. And then you multiply this two, and you will get the best uh, uh, probability of failure, the minimum probability of failure for teams to and remaining teams. So here it is. So here you want to uh, have F20, S2, X2. You multiply it by F3 star of S3, S2. And the <coughs> Optimization for S2 between 0 and S sub 2. And this S2 is given, and it could be 0, 1, and 2, as before. But this one here, we need to find that one out. That one. So that one, this baby is equal to what? To what you had available, which is this, minus the one you have selected. Here, the picture is better. This one is equal to what you have available minus what you select. So this one. So let's do it with the table. So in the table, I, I copy this here. This is the same as this. And S2, as before, it could have 0, 1, or 2. OK, now the decisions are x2 equal 0, x2 equal 1, x2 equal 2. And here, the, the, the Optimization to solve. 
Okay, here, and this is this is for the second thing. The probability of failure here with this thing is 0.63. Okay. If you have zero available and you selected zero, then for the next one you continue with uh, with zero. For the next one, for well, that zero is 0.80. See, that's the right number. So I'm going to show you numbers in red, which are in, in this table. So if you reach, you get to the last team with zero available, then it's 0.80. Red one. Number. You get to the last team with one available, it's 0.50. And if you get to the last team with two available, then it's 0.40. Okay, that's all right. That's all right. This is uh, with one available. And with two available. Okay, let's, let's move like that. Then I will work on this one. So here, uh, if, if you have <coughs> Look, look at this one. Okay, you have one available. Okay, you are not uh, selected anyone. So you continue with one available. Okay, from one available, then the, the probability is, 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 is for the red one is 0.80. And then it's 0.4 times 0.80 equals 30, 0.32. Here, you have two available, you don't use any one, so you continue with this 0.60, and the next one then will be 0.30 for two available. Here, for one available, and here, when for no, nothing available. Okay. So now, look at, look at this, this is symmetric. So it cannot be mechanical. Here, you multiply by 180, by 180, by 180. Here, you multiply by 0.50, by 150. So you can become pretty systematic about what you are doing. Or use the tab here. The tab will give you, see, the tab, I colored the tab in, in the first part, the return, the local return in black, and the remaining stages, the probability of failure for the remaining stages in red. And it is a black number times a red number. So here are the black numbers. Yes, yes, yes. Now what is the red number? Then for the red number, what you need to do is to get S2 minus X2. Okay? So in here, if S2 is equal to 1, and X2 is equal to 0, then this is equal to 1. You go to the table, and the 1 is 0. In here, you have two, okay, then, then if uh, uh, you have uh, two minus uh, zero, then you remain with two, then the red number is control. I continue like that. If, if, if this one is uh, zero available, then you continue with one eight. If this one is two, <coughs> S2 minus X2, S2 minus X2, so you have zero available, is point A. So this is for when S2 equal to X2, S2 equal to X2. They are here, here, and there. That's point A. In here is one minus zero. Okay, and here is two minus one. So you have one available is 0.50 and 0.50. And here is 2 minus 0, 130. So the, the best thing, if you want to get confused, is after you do this calculation, that's 2 minus x2, go to this table. Because s2 minus x2 is this x3. Back here. Back here. Let me start the graph that you were on. Okay. 
This one here? Let, let me see your cheese there. I'm not finished here. Okay, then this is you repeat the analysis for this stage two. You get this <coughs> one, you do the, the, the optimization procedure. And the minimum probability failure is 0.48 here, 